Waking up is being the Christ. So what is the Christ? Because to be the Christ can seem to be an unreal burden. After all, you've got to be constantly good, you've got to be constantly perfect, and you've got to be constantly flawless, and constantly loving under every circumstance. That is a horrible burden and impossible task, it would seem. This is the way the ego would see it. And of course, the ego won't hesitate to uncover the fact that you don't have what it takes in the first place to do any of that. What is it to be the Christ? It is to become daring enough, humble enough to get in touch with who you are at the moment and love yourself. And then be out from the self-acceptance and self-love. It's the honesty I spoke of earlier. Well, you say, if I do that, I may not always be loving. I may at times be quite unyielding. I might be quite a brick wall under some circumstance. And I would have to agree with you, yes, because being the Christ is not being a certain set of behaviors. Being the Christ is being the unapologetic, true expression of who you are at the moment. But you say, I'm not awake at the moment. My ankle still hurts. I still have trouble digesting cheese. I still get angry if so-and-so cuts me off on the freeway. How can I accept myself and how can that be the being, the Christ? Well, if you are willing to love yourself and accept yourself right where you are and release the self-criticism, then you are not conflicted. The Christ is not conflicted. And if you are not conflicted, then you are not in fear. And the Christ is not in fear. And if you are not conflicted and you are not in fear, then you are ripe for revelation. You are ripe for the influx of your greater capacity to be aware divinely. And you are also in a position of loving your fellow man more truly. And that is what the Christ does. And so again, as I said earlier today about truth, the Christ becomes a movement rather than a manifestation of a fixed fact or a fixed personality or characteristic. Because you see, when you are comfortable, you are more willing to explore. You are more willing to be undefended. And the more undefended you are, the more of your divinity can get in through the ego structure and register with you and transform you and lift you into a new viewpoint of yourself. But that comes from a willingness to take yourself right where you are and love yourself and claim your credibility and claim your worth whether you have anything to prove your worth or not. Acquire things that prove your worth, and if they're taken away, you will think your worth has deserted you, when all along your worth has always been yours, inherently yours, something which can't be taken away from you, but something which you can ignore. But when there is a willingness to love yourself, to accept yourself right where you are, and to be you at the moment without apology or without inclination to apologize and without inclination to feel guilty about it. I will tell you something. You have discovered security. Your security that is forever with you unless you believe that you are truly called upon to be something better or different from who you are at the moment. And then let others judge whether or not you are being that better thing well enough. It is ultimately so simple, and so gentle, and so kind, and so reasonable. Waking up is being the Christ. And what being the Christ is in its fullness will reveal itself to you ever more clearly. It doesn't mean being a religious personage. It doesn't mean being the savior of the world. But I will tell you something. If you be the Christ, if you begin to do these simple, gentle, reasonable things, and you discover your joy, and you discover your freedom from fear no matter what seems to be going on, your atmosphere, your attitude will be inspiring to others. Your behavior will justify to others the worth and they're exploring the same kind of self-acceptance and self-love. And so your brothers and sisters will be inspired. But it won't be because you are trying to be the savior, it will be because you are simply loving yourself and finding the joy of it and feeling the congruence of it. 
then in feeling the unity within you. Finding that's one and the same thing with finding God. It's all simple, it's all experiential, none of it is intellectual. But we can do workshops, and we can approach this intellectually. But for this reason only, to help you arrive at the logical conclusion that there is a God, and that God is all. And you can then just intellectually let go into the experience. But it's a letting go into the experience that constitutes the act or leap of faith, the investment of trust that actually does the trick. It's arriving at that point where you let go of the control and just allow. Allow yourself to be who you are. Love yourself at the moment, give yourself credit, and don't buy into the suggestion of others and their opinions that you leave much to be desired, and that indeed you are a pain in the neck, and that you are indeed far from divine, and that indeed it will take you lifetimes to deserve to walk in the kingdom of heaven. Well, you are in it. You are in it and you never left it. And it is love that will uncover it to you. And it starts with love for you. I know this is the same old story, but I'm telling you something in a way that it makes more real sense to you, so that it doesn't just seem to be a spiritual practice, but something that is so ultimately natural to you that it becomes silly not to be doing it. Most of all, you need to know that it doesn't take obedience and it doesn't take effort. It isn't hard work. It's letting go. Letting go into your fundamental, ever-present, unchangeable divinity. 